Hi, it's the middle of September already. We're heading into autumn and colder days. And, oh, they're just around the corner. Anyway, um, I've read six books this first half of the month. Uh, only one from the booker list because the library, I'm so far down on the reserve list for the library. Um, the short list is announced tomorrow and I'm still three books short on the long list. So, um, so the one from the long list that I did read was Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. Uh, this is the story of Native Americans across generations. It's sort of almost following one family across the generations. We have the Sand Creek Massacre. We have the um, Carlisle Indian Industrial Schools where the um, Indigenous children were put to learn about American culture. Um, it covers addiction. It covers poverty. You know, um, we start off with Jude Star and, and go through the the generations ending up with Orville, Luther and Lonnie Redfeather. Um, three teenage, three young boys um, and we follow addiction. We follow their addiction. Um, well, it's Orville particular, Orville, we follow his addiction. Um, you've also got their grandmothers, Opal, Opal Viola, Victoria Redfeather and Jackie Bear Shields. Um, for me, I wanted more about the women. I, 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 their stories seemed a lot more interesting and I didn't feel that we, we had them. Uh, another one I read was, um, one that I was sent by a publisher. It came out at the end of August and it was Conquest by Dirk Strasser. It's a historical fantasy, something that I don't normally go for. Um, and we're in the time of uh, Peru and the conquistadors. We're in 1538 and Cristobal de Vaga uh, has already sacked Machu Picchu and is now looking for Villa Cabamba, where the Incan gold is supposed to be. But partway through the story, he, he, he goes through a portal and he ends up in another world. And he can't turn back. The portal is closed. It's a one way only. So he can't get back. And suddenly those that were conquering become the hunted. And I wasn't never quite sure where I was being led in this one. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I was going to. So for a bit of historical fantasy. Then the next one I listened to was Day by Michael Cunningham. Um, and it was, uh, he read the hours. And we have three days. We have the 5th of April 2019, the 5th of April 2020 and the 5th of April 2021. Um, it's all by sort of pre-COVID, COVID and post-COVID. Um, 2019. Isabel and Dan, they've got Nathan and Violet and their brother, Isabel's brother, Robbie, is living in the attic. Um, Garth is Dan's brother, who's got a partner, Chess, and a son, Odin. Um, it's not the happiest marriage. Dan's a failed musician. Isabel wonders if she's a good mum. And Robbie, does he want to continue teaching? Um, now that he's split from his partner, Oliver, who he feel he's, he still has feelings for, what, what does he need to do? Um, he's always harboured feelings for Dan. And then we move on to the pandemic where Robbie is in Iceland. And then we move on to 2021, sort of three days over three years. Um, it's a family bending with the changing world. And that was... I quite like that one. Um, Elizabeth Strout's got a new one that comes out in three days time, uh, 19th of September. Um, and it's, it carries on the sort of, almost carries on the Lucy Barton series, but it's not primarily about her. She's still in Maine with William 
and she's still very good friends with Bob and Margaret and Bob and Lucy take walks, long walks all the time. And in this one, Lucy meets Olive Kitteridge um, and they share stories. You learn a lot about Bob in this one, I found, um, because he takes on the defence case of uh, a man, Matthew Beach, whose mother went missing and then was found dead. We learn a lot about him. And he's almost a man who doesn't know his own value in the world. There are so many characters and every, it shows how everyone's life interacts with everybody else's lives and how everyone affects each other. Um, missed opportunities, friendship, loneliness. It was a perfect sort of carry on for the Lucy Barton series, although she's not the main person all the time. It was that lovely style of writing, that conversational style that you got on the others. What else did I read? <gasps> the Glassmaker, uh, Tracy Chevalier's new one. It came out a few days ago on the 12th. And this was absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's set in 1480s. We start off in 1486, Murano, with the Rossa family. And Osola, um, she's the daughter. And the family are glassmakers on Murano. And she uses the image of a skimming stone. You know, when you stand on the, the water's edge with a flat stone and send it off so it bounces. And she uses that. And each time the stone stops, we're in a different century. But Asola and her family are aging differently. They are aging at a different time, a different speed to the world and it's a lovely concept and I absolutely adored it. We, we, we cover through, we go through the play, we cover through Napoleon, World War I and we see the history of glass production and the different styles and how a family's life changes and adapts and the women are really, really strong characters in this but Venice and Murano the islands are characters in themselves. I adored that one. Um, and then I think the final, don't you, the final one? The final one I read was um, Paul Auster's last one, Baumgartner. Um, it was published in 20, October 2023, and he sadly died in April 2024. Um, Cy Baumgartner is in his 70s. He's soon to be retired as a philosophy professor. His wife Anne died 10 years before. But he's locked his pain away. He's locked that grief away for 10 years. But today, when we start the book, is a day when little accidents keep happening. And you have the discussion of phantom limbs. Um, and he finally opens the door to his grief and his memories. And he misses her and how he misses her. And he, he finds her work because she was a writer and he takes pleasure in reading her work and he begins to take pleasure in the simple things as well. Because, you know, a nice September day, how many more nice September days will he get to see? Um, and it, he... A grad student, graduate student, wants to, to research Anna's work. And he sees this as a way of keeping Anna alive in the future. And I was left wondering what the next chapter was going to be. I, I listened to it on Audible and Paul Auster is the, the narrator for this. So those were the six books that I read this first half of the month. My favourite one, the one in the lead so far, is Tracy Chevalier is the classmaker, an absolutely stunning read. So I will leave you now. Um, I will start on the second half of September, see what books I can read then. Hopefully I'll get the other three bookers done, but who knows, I might still be on the waiting list by Christmas. So happy reading. Take care. <laughs>